Oh, wait. <laughs> Hazel said that uh, Terminal Annex just dropped off a new shipment of... We're fine. Everything's okay. Again. Good to know. Again. <laughs> you know, maybe this is a good time to go uh, see, see Hazel. Hazel. Ooh, this one has a hole in it. A million postcards in Hawaii, and people mail those. Oh, hold on. Oh, that reminds me. Where are you and Norman going on your honeymoon? Oh, well, my parents gave us the Star Cruiser, so we'll probably take that somewhere fun, but there's just so much more to do first. <laughs> What's a Star Cruiser? Uh, it's sort of like a Winnebago. How far have you gotten on the list? The list? What list? The... <laughs> There's a hundred things to do? Of course not. There are thousands. Those are just the first hundred. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Hazel. Yeah. <laughs> As usual, you've been nothing but helpful. <laughs> a great day, Rita. <laughs> it's okay, this way. <laughs> this way. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning. What happened now? Uh, well, we experienced... A minor chemical misfortune, a little too much potassium chlorate in Norman's rapid recovery mixture. What's that? A uh, new and improved revelation solution for the particularly illegible and indecipherable. Oh. Hmm. What is an old camera doing in last week's unattached items box? Hmm. Norman, it's time to come in now. Roger that. Perhaps I can lift a remnant of ink with our new solution. I had no idea you were such a chemistry buff. Oh, yes. In fact, when I was 10, I begged my father for a chemistry set, but he felt I was spending too much time on indoor pursuits already, so he signed me up for Little League instead. <laughs> How long did that last? Three games. Too much dirt. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> what do you got for me? Whoa. I haven't seen a camera like this since my cousin Bartholomew's bar mitzvah when I was 12. You know, Rita, providing these cameras to your wedding guests might be a wonderful way for you to capture moments you might not otherwise get to see. Yes, but everybody has cell phones nowadays. Well, not everybody. <clears throat> Miss McInerney, in our world of instant gratification and countless redos, there is something truly satisfying about not being able to hit delete in favor of another photo with better lighting or a more perfect smile. And sometimes, it's the imperfections in life that make something perfect. Hmm. Well, you still have something on your face. Now, oh. shall I uh, wipe it off or should I just leave you perfect? Oh. <laughs> Trust me. Looks like a soluble felt tip blue marker. Handwriting. Shaky, indicating possible hand tremors. All I see is hair and more big hair. This is about more than one photograph, and it's certainly about more than just hair. We are going to Pueblo, and we'll need some sort of a uh, uh, mobile command unit. Hmm? Uh, Norman, Rita, may we engage your recreation vehicle? Hmm? Well, uh, we haven't exactly... What a great idea. It'll be like a practice honeymoon. Only better because we'll all be together. Oh, Rita. I do love you. Aww. Norman, you are marrying a wonderful woman. Thank you. Have I mentioned I don't know how to drive that thing? It's quite striking. Extraordinary, really. I am big. Just think of all the places this venerable vehicle has traveled. Do I have to? My parents put 200,000 miles on it. <laughs> well, then, let's make sure the next 200 miles count, shall we? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Despite the gravity of our mission, it will be fun to get her out on the open road and see what she can do. Oh, uh, well, hey, why don't you go first? My treat. Uh -huh. Is 
see Norman, it's really not that difficult. You just have to make friends with every little noise and rattle in the chassis if you want to learn what she likes and what she doesn't. Okay. A thing to remember is always pay attention. How's it coming? Oh, well, for the cake, we both like chocolate, so that should be easy. And Ramon can pick the music. What about the invitations? Oh, well, it says here to always leave room for a bit of whimsy in your wedding. So I'm thinking invitations in the shape of owls that say, guess who's getting married? It's very whimsical, very you. And for our colors, we'll just stay postal. Red, white, blue. Great. Okay. Do you have to keep a good balance between looking behind, looking forward. Got it. And most importantly, you have to treat her with respect. Don't push her too hard. She might, uh, she might break down. Oh, we don't want that. Nope. For too long, with patience, determination, you start, you start to become one. Excuse me. We have been talking about the Star Cruiser, right? I uh, just uh, thought you'd like to know that once we get to Pueblo, the hotel exit is 43. Then you turn right, go 4.2 miles, and, um, well, that should be coming up in about 10 minutes. Oh, thank you, Miss McInerney. Ooh, my pleasure, Mr. O'Toole. <laughs> I know you like to keep things professional, but we're out of the office now, so it's okay to call me Shane. We are out of the office, but uh, we are in the mobile unit. Mm. A uh, fine distinction, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I know you'd say that. Oh. You did? Uh-huh. Oh. I just like hearing you say it. Because I know you, Mr. O'Toole. Oh, look! <laughs> Tags at 41, so close. Down. It's okay, it's not important. It seems like he really wants to talk to you. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of uh, wrong numbers recently. Oh. not to eat tuna from the same place I'd buy motor oil. Ooh, yeah, maybe we should just buy sandwich stuff and make our own. Right, as long as they have rye bread. Oh, and dill pickles for Norman. Shoot, forgot to ask Rita to get pickles. <laughs> Rita knows you love pickles. Did you remember to tell Shane that you like your ham and cheese on rye? Oh, I think we know each other well enough by now to... Looks <sighs> like she forgot to take her... <clears throat> okay, one more time. Big hair, then Madonna, then blurry speeding car picture, then US 50. And if she was coming here to Cannon City, we should have seen this roadside stand by now. Do you think we should go back, Oliver? Oliver? Sorry. Hmm? Oh, you're tired. You did a lot of driving today. Uh, so have you. I didn't realize you were such an excellent driver. <laughs> well, stick with me, kid. I'm full of surprises. <laughs> yes, you are. <sighs> you know, a year ago, I would have said that we were on a wild goose chase. I would look at these pictures and that stuffed dinosaur and the video. I would know that none of this is going to get us any closer to finding that little boy. But I believe what you've taught me, Oliver. That that child didn't just drop a camera into a mailbox. He mailed a piece of hope. 
and somehow it found its way to us and here we are in a star cruiser <laughs> we have no idea where we're going but i know that that we're on our way and i'm i'm trusting that we'll get there uh do you believe that yes trust the timing right That's your phone. You uh, left it when you went to get lunch. It's been uh, dinging a lot. Yeah, you know, sometimes I envy you. You don't have a cell phone. You don't know more. No annoying buzzing or dinging. No GPS to tell you exactly how to get somewhere or how long it should take. There is something to be said about being out in the open road. If you pump it too much, you'll flood it. I am familiar with the concept of fuel injection, Miss McInerney, but thank you for your concern. Sorry, it's just that I... Mm. Is there anything else you would like to tell me before we proceed? I don't know. It's just I've been through something like this before. A breakdown? A temporary failure to restart? just takes some patience. Patience? Mm. Huh. So I shouldn't check for cracks in the manifold or the water levels. I don't know what I was thinking. All I need is patience. I'm sure that's in the owner's manual somewhere. I'm sorry. Who are you and what have you done with Oliver? Excuse me. Did Norman just completely avoid the topic of children? Did Oliver just overheat? I guess you never really know somebody until you put down some serious miles. We'll see. <sighs> I should have known I couldn't push her like that. Oh, she just needs to cool down a bit. You seem to be getting the hang of things. I think you might be ready to take the next leg of the drive. Yeah, I don't know about that. Remember when I said I can't drive? Oh, well, you were nervous to operate such a large motor vehicle. Very understandable concern. Nope. I mean, I really can't drive. Norman asked me to marry him. He specifically said he wanted a family. And now, now he's more interested in the average airspeed of a, a red-tailed hawk? Norman loves you, Rita. Maybe he just felt a, a little weird about taking a test to see if he's compatible with a woman that he's already engaged to. Maybe he realized he wasn't. And you never talked about this uh, with Rita? I was afraid she wouldn't want to marry me. Oh, well, my friend, take it from someone who knows you can't start a marriage holding back a piece of your heart. You're better off giving her all of it from the beginning. Just pray she wants to keep it. Rita, I don't know two more compatible people. As far as you know, maybe you don't know Norman as well as you thought you did. I mean, maybe I don't either. We never really know someone as well as you think you do. Do you even know how many cousins he actually has? Well, I don't even think he knows. <laughs> Ladies, uh, Norman believes we may be ready to resume our journey. We'll be right there. You ready? Hey, I'm a little tired. Uh, Oliver, would you mind taking the wheel again? Oh, uh, yes, happy to. Uh, 
Miss McInerney, would you care to be my co-pilot? in case of a breakdown. I guess I was uh, completely wrong about that. I'm very sorry. I was out of line. The RV overheated. So did I. I forgive you. But why? Well... Oh my gosh. It can't be. The roadside story. That was it. That was it. No wonder this is it. Like, uh, like Melvin's melons. Huh. Yes, well, being from the East Coast, I'm sure if you're aware that Colorado is famous for its cantaloupe and honeydew. Yep, somehow I missed that. Well, um, this looks like the Ms. Norman is on to something. Photo. Well, at least we know she's his mother. And yet we can't be sure that makes him safe. What do you mean? Well, we're assuming that the boy has been taken, but what if he's been rescued? Hmm? Oh, so we know Rachel is his mom, but maybe she's... Running away from a bad situation. Yeah. Sorry. Just had to buy something. A map. Yeah, shocking, I know. You have your laptop. No, I lost my hotspot. Excuse me? No mobile internet, so no laptop connection, so no GPS. Hence, the map. Who are you? And what have you done with Shane McInerney? <laughs> oh, don't worry. She's not going anywhere. Well, it makes sense. Rachel's little boy loves dinosaurs, and... Dinosaur National Monument is essentially one right turn at the end of US 50, but it's at least four hours away. Mm -hmm. Norman, it's your third piece of pie. How can you still be hungry? Norman loves pie. <laughs> All that driving really took it out of me. You drove 13 miles. Mm-hmm. I think we're all tired. Uh, why don't we find a motel and get some rest? We'll uh, drive back to Denver in the morning and decide where to go from there. Wait, we're not going to go see the dinosaurs? Well, let's be honest. Rachel and her boy came through for three weeks ago, and they could be anywhere by now. All we have is a photograph of the letter. I don't know what else to do without a solid lead as to their next stop. And we'll just have to pray for one. Well, we were fortunate. There was still one room available. You and Rita may take the room. Norman and I will uh, sleep in the... Recreational vehicle. <laughs> Oliver O'Toole, man of courage. Oh, courage takes many forms, Ms. McInerney. <laughs> Wanna take a walk? Yes, okay. How do they do it? What do you mean? Well, there's something going on between those two that they haven't worked out yet but still hold hands and let whatever it is pull them apart. Do you know what it is? No. Do you? Yes. So? Oh, I'm not telling. <laughs> Good. I'd be disappointed in you if you did. Is that a test, Miss McInerney? <laughs> No, I hate Ted. You know, that's how a lot of relationships end. You fail someone else's test that you didn't even know you were taking. We are in a relationship, aren't we? Uh, I'm gonna go with... Yes. Then I need to ask you a question. Okay. Who is Alex Bright?
You saw my phone. Yes. If I tell you that I'm not ready to talk about it yet, will you trust me? Yes. Can we still hold hands while I'm working things out? Shane. I'm not letting go. Well, we didn't end up accomplishing what we wanted to on this trip, but it was worth it just to see those two happy. It was worth it just to see you survive 12 hours without internet access. <laughs> Very funny. Just putting it off as long as I can, just protect him. And yourself. Maybe. Good people do stupid things. I know that. But you lost your home and uh, your friends and your reputation because of what Jack did. You know, maybe you'll forgive him. Maybe you won't, but uh, until you can face him, Rachel, You'll always be sort of in prison yourself. I know. Because. My sister has a gambling problem. A big one. Like she gambled her whole life away and uh, tore apart our family in the process. We haven't, um, we haven't talked for a long time, so I know a little bit about how you feel. And we can tell ourselves that we're moving on, but uh, we don't really get very far when we're dragging so much behind us. So, maybe, There's a reason that we found ourselves together on this road today to help each other and Danny. So I will make you a deal. If you reach out to your husband, I will. I will reach out to my sister. Mentioned your sister before. Hurt too much. Still does. But now you know. Thought you knew me, right? Uh, I still do. I just don't know your sister. You're two different people. You're Shane McInerney. She's, uh, she's... Alex. Alex Brighton. All those texts on my phone, those are hers. She's been in recovery since last year, and every once in a while, she calls and tries to reconnect. But you never call back. Not after what she did to our mother. All the sleepless nights, the ruined holidays. My mom even sold our house to pay for the debt and to, and to put her through rehab. 
Maybe. Maybe my sister has got her act together now. I'm just so... I'm still so... Angry? So angry. I, I am so angry that I'm... I'm afraid to return her calls because I don't know what I'm going to say. So I just don't. But now I have to. <laughs> what was I thinking, making that deal with Rachel? It was, seemed like a good idea at the time, but now I actually have to do it. Yes. and sat with her. <laughs> there is only one person I know who's in charge of that. Everyone else, we just have to forgive for being human. It's me. Hi. <laughs> really? Well, that's, um, that's good, right? Uh, have you seen Ma? Oh. Yeah, maybe at Christmas. Still in, um, Denver. <laughs> No, I, uh, I love it, actually. Tell her you have a boyfriend. I, uh, <laughs> I have a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, he's, uh, he's everything I never knew I wanted. Oliver. <laughs> Does anybody have a problem with an apple pan <laughs> wedding pie from Minnie's? <laughs> May I? Please be your guest. Mm. Uh, so what was so important? Well, uh, we still have 76 things to do on our 100 things to do before our wedding list, and we need your help. Well, we will do what we can. Number 43, choose your best man. Number 44, choose your maid of honor. You're the first friend that I ever had that truly believed in me. You taught me how to stand and sort, and forward, and deliver all sorts of impossible things. You made me believe that being loved by somebody incredible like Rita was not an impossible thing. You're the best man that I know all of, and I'd like you to be my best man. I can think of no place I'd rather be than by your side when you marry Rita. And you, you know, you're like a sister to me, like the sister I never had. But even if I had a sister, I would still want you to be my maid of honor. <laughs> Not that I have anything against my real sister that I don't even have. I just... I can't imagine getting married or, or being married or raising children. I can't imagine any of that without you. And Norman, of course. Of course, of course, Norman. Of course, Norman. <laughs> 
So, uh, what is question 45? Um, decide whether or not you're going to fly, take a train, or drive on your honeymoon. Well, let's go to Fiji. Ooh, yes. Do not mail me a coconut. What? I love sending coconuts in the mail. No coconuts. Are you serious? But that's like, come on, what do you think? I love anything except a coconut.